My name is Fred Abley, and I'll be your instructor for IST 210, Organization of Data, for this coming uh, semester. And I'd like to just take a few moments to uh, introduce myself. There will be another video put out there shortly that gives you a little bit more about my background and my interests, and a little bit more of really who I am and what you can expect of me as an instructor. But I would just like to tell you up front that I am an IST professor, um, instructor in the uh, university college. So that means I'm located at one of the branch campuses, and it's at Penn State Worthing in Scranton, located right near Scranton, Pennsylvania. IST 210 is a four credit class, which is uh, a step above as far as workload goes uh, in regards to maybe an IST 110 that some of you have already just completed. I'd like to welcome you here to uh, one of my labs where I teach the resident students, and we just actually completed teaching IST 210, which is a great course that's going to familiarize you with the creation and the development of a database and also understand some of the uh, issues that come along with presenting data, displaying data, and manipulating data. So once again, I'd like to welcome you. I'm excited to teach this course. I've uh, been teaching it ultimately now for the past 10 years and it's changed, it's evolved, and it's only getting better. So for the next uh, few months during the summer, we're going to get to know each other a lot better. You're going to get a chance to explore a little more formally what databases are. And I'll tell you right off the bat that most of you have not had a chance to explore databases. It's a little bit different. It's not like going into Excel and sitting and building an Excel spreadsheet or using Word, or maybe even uh, building a simple web page. Databases often are that one area that have a little bit of a mystique to it. I also realize that many of you are technology professionals and you do have an understanding of what a database is. I can tell you that one of the things that this course is not is a course on how to use Access, Microsoft Access, which is a personal database. And we're going to talk about that as we progress through the course. What is a personal database and what is a mid-range database and what is an enterprise level database? There is a difference. During this course, you're also going to get a chance to learn what, uh, what is SQL or Structured Query Language, SQL, as many people call it. SQL is the heart of pulling data is the heart technology of pulling data from a database and then displaying it. One of the things that I want every student to understand when they get to this class is the fact that you are now working on what's known as the back end. So I want to just uh, take a few moments and draw a few things on the whiteboard here and uh, kind of understand, get a better understanding of where we're going to be going with this course. Okay. So if you were sitting in one of my classes here in the resident instruction, you'd be sitting out here at one of these desks, which you'll get a chance to see in a moment. And uh, we have full access to a normal whiteboard. Great brainstorming tool, right, for projects, which you do have in this class. We're going to be using uh, a few different technologies. But up front, uh, you're going to see that we worry about the back end. And I'm going to just draw what's known as a server, a box, if you will, right? And then we have, ultimately, this one tier so on this server is where we start to see this canister appear. And you're going to see this image a lot going forward. That canister represents our database. As you progress through the IST curriculum, you're going to start to see that there's a more formal approach to this, but I'm going to give a simplified overview of what is the tiered application structure. This is known as the back end or the general services tier. And then we get to the application tier, or the middleware. And then ultimately we get to what's also known as the front end. The front end is what you see. That's what all the users see and so on. Now the front end, um, we know that maybe it's going to be viewed in a web browser, like a website. Take ESPN.com for example. What you're looking at there is a very, very sophisticated website that's ultimately data-driven. In this class, you will focus almost 99% of your energies and efforts building the database piece that will support any applications, any software programs that will ultimately be providing data to the user. So that's where we are in the whole grand scheme of things. All right. Now with that being said, you're going to learn the technologies to design to extract, to manipulate, and so on. 
And then once we get to the, the data that gets pushed out here and gets to the user, what are some of those issues? Who should see the data? Who should have access to the data? And then we'll explore some of the ethical uh, issues that surround some of these, these problems or, or these challenges that we have. So once again, welcome to IFC 210. Now for the first week, we have May 16th through May 22nd, or thereabouts. On the website, or excuse me, in Angel, which is our course uh, management system, or a learning management system, also known as an LMS, which is also a data-driven tool, you're going to start to see that we have a series of tabs, and we'll have the syllabus tab, the calendar tab, the lessons tab, resources, communicate, report, and manage. All of our communications for this course will take place in Angel. You also will note that you can contact me through Gmail. I do have a Gmail account provided in the, uh, the Angel Learning Space, and you feel free to text me or chat with me at any time. I'm accessible pretty much any portion of the day as long as I'm not tied up with doing anything, but I encourage you to make use of that uh, open time, if you will. I will also have scheduled meeting times, and I know the challenges that are going along with that. I know that we're all over the world and we have varying schedules, but I'll make my best attempt to try to have live sessions and also have those live sessions recorded so that you can basically keep tabs of what's going on. Your biggest challenge with this course will also be a team project. Yes, you will be assembled into teams where you will be working on a course project known as Flix to you. Stay tuned for a video that's going to describe that and give you the whole scenario as to what's going on with this particular company that's going up against Netflix and Blockbuster. It's a great project. But going back to what you have coming up this week, I'd like you to get comfortable with what is in the course content. You'll see that you'll have some pieces that you need to complete and get familiar with. If this is your first course, and in particular your first IST course online, please take the time to explore some of the practice drop boxes and eventually the practice discussion boards and practice quizzes. I will tell you that IST takes great, great strides and a lot of pride into producing a great online course. Now, this week coming up, take a look at the course content, read module zero content, all right? complete the student questionnaire form, take a look at the problem document, and so on. Where am I getting all this information? I'm getting it right from the syllabus tab. I would encourage you to look at that. The syllabus is a living document and it is subject to change. I will notify you when it, it does, if there's changes to assignments, when their due dates are, and so on. Take a look and make use of the calendar in Angel. I'll post a variety of, of due dates, or what I call deliverables. In the IT world, anything that we produce, we typically label as a deliverable. And it's a, a component that we usually provide to our customer, whether they're internal customers or external customers. Going forward, you will need your textbook. The textbook ISBN is there in the angel space. You can order that as soon as possible, please. Uh, it's important that you have that textbook. There is also course content that you have to read in angel, and that course content is uh, another piece. Like I said before, it's a four credit class, not a three credit class. An A in a four credit class is an awesome thing to have. A C or below in a four credit class is not a good thing to have. So I would expect for you to stay in pace with the work, keep in touch with me, and you'll do fine. I make use of YouTube videos, and I do make use of email. I would like you to get in the habit of checking your email at least, at a minimum, twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. If this class is made up of like a lot of online students that I've had before, I'll find that you do your work almost uh, the weekend that it's due. However, when you look at this syllabus, please make note of the work that's going to be required. If you put it off until the last minute, it's going to impact the quality of work that you do, and you may even miss the deadline. I do have a policy on deadlines. I do not accept anything one week after it is due without you coming to me. One of the things we strive in IST is not only to produce a great technical professional, but a professional. You wouldn't go into work or not miss a bunch of days at work and not tell your manager or your boss. I would expect the same kind of rapport with, uh, with my students. Consider me your project manager for this class or your program manager. And then if you were running into any obstacles, any difficulties, send me an email. We can work through it. I know you'll do that, but I also know that life gets crazy 
And when it does, please try to remember that you're, you've enrolled in a course and that communication between us is really important. I wish you the best of luck this semester, and I'm really excited to get this summer uh, or, or other piece going here. And uh, as we move along, feel free to contact me at any time, and we'll have a great class together. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.